guys, the last couple of months have really just showed us that, you know, we've got to be praying. Um, America, especially American Christianity, is in a very dangerous place. I believe God has been allowing a lot of this stuff to just wake us up. We're going to see a separation between Christians and believers. I've said this many times before. Everybody in America thinks that they are a Christian and that eventually they're going to present a Christianity that is acceptable in the world's eyes, but it's not acceptable in God's eyes. And, you know, you're going to have to bow down and subscribe to that kind of Christianity. And a lot of people can't see it coming, but I see it clear as day. And one of the biggest issues we have, and it's one of the tactics of the enemy, is getting in your feelings, right? Most most of these Christians today, they're, they're very in their feelings and not in the scripture. I'm very big on what I feel. Well, you know, I feel like God is not like that. And I feel like we don't need to be involved in a, a politics. And, and I, I feel like, you know, you misinterpret the Bible. Feel it, just feelings. I feel like I'm a prophet. I feel like I got a word. I feel, I feel, I feel. And feelings can be deceptive. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of that way is death. And often we see people have these feelings that they think are God, but it has nothing to do. It can't be backed up in the scripture. It can't be backed up in the Bible. For example, I feel Christians shouldn't be involved in government or politics. The Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. All throughout the Bible, we see Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the story of Esther, that politics and kingdom affected and persecuted believers and the church. Now, we don't make anybody a God or an idol. And some people argue, they say, oh, you're making God an idol. No, I'm trying to make sure people are not uh, you're making politics uh, and presidents an idol. No, I'm trying to make sure that people are not ignorant because my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, the Bible says. And so when I walk around ignorantly and I walk according to my feelings, the Bible says the end of that way is death. I saw a post and this is not disrespect any, t any type of way, but it said, um, you know, who's in the White House doesn't determine revival. Nobody's arguing that revival is going to happen regardless, but who's in the White House does affect the church. Who's in the schools does affect our children. Who's teaching our kids does affect our children. Um, it does affect Christian businesses. It does affect our well-being. And yes, ultimately, our hope will always be in Jesus Christ. But notice that oftentimes the people who speak like this, oh, you know, God is in control. We shouldn't be involved in politics. It's usually because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the facts or it's not... Um, their party that is winning their time or winning at this time or their candidate that is winning. And the reason why I talk about it so much is because God shows me it exposes what is going on in people's heart. The Bible says, if I don't love the truth, God will send a strong delusion. And what we see happening with the politics and stuff is many people are just in their feelings, right? I don't like Donald. I feel like I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like his face. And they can't see the spiritual aspect because it's a carnal perspective that they have. And they think it's from God and they think that they're deep. But the reality is no, because it goes against uh, the word of God. A lot of things that people be saying how can you support this pastor first of all how can you bash trump for his past and say well he said grab women by the this and the that but his legislation is pro kingdom but then go support this guy in georgia who has a past that is just as bad as uh you know president trump's and some could argue maybe even worse um and then he's going against biblical values so that right there, it exposes the heart. It exposes people and their feelings and their emotions and the double standards. And God is allowing everything to bring those things to the surface because the Bible says what? Man looks at the outward appearance and God looks at the heart. One thing that God has showed me consistently, I've tried to connect with so many people and brother Marcus is flawed just like every, I, there's nobody in the kingdom who's not flawed. One of the biggest problems we have is people try to act like they're not flawed and they got people will point out my flaws and I'm like, I could see your flaws too. But, you know, they don't want to connect with Brother Marcus. But one thing that God showed me why Firehouse is going to do what it's do, what it's going to do and why it's going to do uh, or why it's done what it's done is because the heart. That's what God is looking at, man. People are caught in tradition. They're caught in religion. They're caught in their, their heart is messed up because of skin color. Their heart is messed up because of, of, of bitterness. We got to find a way to position our heart posture in front of God and say, Lord, search my heart. Lord, show me the truth. 
even if it goes against how I feel, even if it goes against my side, even if it goes against my logic, even if it goes against my understanding. And you know what? What I know in the spirit for sure, many people in America are not doing that. They're looking at situations and saying, I got this thing figured out. I understand. I know this. I know this. And you know what? God is the one. I feel like God told, and it's their feelings and it's their emotions because they think they got it figured out because you could test everything by going to the word of God. In the word of God, we see that politics and uh, affected the uh, believers and Christians over and over again. But the strong delusion and the deception in America is that, oh, well, that's not going to happen here. We're exempt. I, uh, let me talk about this, the censorship of President Trump, right? So people say, oh, it's no big deal that, that President Trump, you know, is getting censored. He was inciting violence. Well, number one, the problem with that is people like Maxine uh, Waters or whatever her name was. She was saying, go out there and get in their face. And, you know, like literally like President Trump's tweet, you kind of, it's if you're being honest, it's kind of open to interpretation. Somebody can interpret and say he was inciting violence, but he never told anybody to go do anything violent. Maxine Waters actually told people to do violent things and to get in people's face and get in people's space. But it's okay. Just apparently, you know, the media doesn't care about that. Then I posted on my Instagram, because I just got banned on Facebook. I made a post about, you know, women who... You know, they complain that men are dogs, but they don't acknowledge God before they date these guys. And God would tell them, no, I also made a post about these men being soft. Like, it seems like this new group of men is soft and they're just really in their feelings and really in their emotions. And I and I got banned for both of those posts. They sent me two messages said it was hate speech. Nothing to do with politics. I've been banned, obviously, for speaking about against uh, LGBTQ and love. There's been people who have wrote books who were in the LGBTQ community, met Christ, and then converted over, and their books are banned on Amazon. There's been pro-life videos banned on YouTube. So it's not about just, oh, President Trump inciting violence, and that's what they always try to give you a justification for why they're trying to do what they do, especially in America because we're politically correct. But I'm telling you there's some more, and you don't got to listen to me. You don't, you don't, I always tell people, go pray about what I say. Every video I make, go pray about it for yourself. You don't have to, to listen to me. Ask God about it for yourself. But this is the time the church needs to wake up. Many people are rocked to sleep because they're not in the word. They're ignorant to the word of God. My people destroy for a lack of knowledge and their whole Christianity is based off feelings. It's this liberal Christianity all where anything goes, Right. I just, I feel like God is not really like that. I feel like I could dress half naked. I feel like I could dress and, and have my boobs out, even though the Bible tells me to dress modest. I feel like I could have a little drink. I feel like I could have a little smoke. I feel like I could have a little sex. I feel like I could be gay because God's really not like that. But what does the Bible say? And that's the problem we see with this modern Christianity. They're getting further and further away from what the Bible says. And Christianity is based on their feelings. And then what's dangerous about that is they feel that they got some new revelation from God. And they say, oh, it was the spirit that was telling me. Yeah, it was the spirit, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. And it came through your feelings and your emotions. Because why? It goes against the Bible. I don't care what you say. I don't care what revelation you say you got. If it goes against the Bible, it's wrong. Period. And even that is a dangerous thing because people misinterpret the Bible. They, they miss other part of scriptures that bring more context to other scriptures. So work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Hey, I love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. I thank you all who have been um, sowing in the firehouse. I open up the bank account. Hopefully when this COVID stuff goes away, I'll be able to get some kind of building. I'm going to look at trying to just rent a building, even though COVID is still going on. Maybe I can get one. But I just want to take a second to say I appreciate you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful evening.